Let's get salty! Everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video and we are likely expecting a balance patch either late this week or early next week and I feel like it needs to be one of the largest ones we have had in recent history. At least for me, the game's not super fun, the power level is out of control, and it's only the first expansion of the year. So we're gonna go through what, I don't know if it's so much predictions, but what I'd like to see get nerfed. We could talk about possible buffs as well as we're expecting that. And if you enjoy the content on the channel, if you like, I've earned your subscription, please hit that sub button down below. Give the video a like, it helps us out a lot. And there was this uh, thread, Reddit thread started, or uh, like, well, when I'm recording this like six hours ago, but yesterday I'd like to see more buff since there aren't that many cards that can be nerfed. What universe are they living in? But the important part here is ridiculous half the community manager replying to this thread with 29.2 on Tuesday, the 16th was the last major content patch and balance patches are typically within nine to 14 days of balance or content patches. So if we're going the low end of that nine, nine days, we're looking at this Thursday, the high end would be the four, uh, 14 days, which would be like my birthday, April 30th. So. We're going with one of those days. Uh, either way, let's talk about what I'd like to see happen. We already talked about at least a few days ago why Hearthstone just isn't that fun for me right now and highlighted some of the most recent Master Tour games with like Nature Shaman and all the OTK stuff going on. Right now, it's either OTK or Scam with insane early stats and really not much in between. The game is so fast, it, it's feeling very kind of, you know, United and Stormwindy, where if you take a look at the top meta decks, it's the same type of deal. We have an aggro deck, it's Spell Token Hunter being very good. Zarimi Priest, which is an aggressive deck that gets to take an extra turn. Pain Warlock with insane early game scams. Wheel Warlock, which just locks control out by spinning the wheel and winning in four turns, not five. Sludge Warlock, another aggro deck. Flood Paladin, another aggro deck. Rainbow Decay, the only thing resembling control, but is really reliant on plagues, which is really unfun and completely locks out an entire archetype basically from the game in Reno decks. Zilliax Rogue, which is a pure uh, scam deck with the stealth Zilliax. Nature Shaman, which OTKs on turn five. And Miracle Rogue, which has insane scam. So you'll note the pattern, right? Not much mid range, not much value, not much control. It's aggro, it's scams. And well, I think there needs to be a massive change because these just, to me, these decks aren't fun and don't resemble what Hearthstone is supposed to be about. So let's go into what changes would I like to see. And starting off, Death Fight is actually kind of a part of the problem. Uh, I mentioned the scams. I mentioned the lack of board decks. One of the problems with trying to develop a board in today's game is you face a card like Threads of Despair, where you develop a board and they clear it for one mana, right? They put it on a poisonous unit, it clears the entire board. This card to me is as problematic as a scam deck or as like a big OTK deck, where if you can't ever develop a board into a card like this, it's a problem. So I think Threads of Despair gets hit. This card is way too good for its cost. You compare it to a Defile, it feels much better than Defile, and it's cheaper. I could see it going to two mana. I've heard the argument of making it double blood, but they've really tried to get away from that rune stuff. So Threads of Despair, I could see going to two. There are some other standout cards like Acolyte of Death drawing too many cards. You also have another uh, card in here in Sickly Grimewalker, which also makes boards pretty irrelevant. Um, I don't think they would hit both, but you could see maybe Sickly Grimewalker get hit as well, or the Acolyte of Death maybe going up a mana and then the other card you're looking at with death knight is hell yeah maybe you make it so she just shuffles like two plagues or the three that she shuffles are infinite and not the other ones it is a very frustrating card it's a very contentious card and i could see it getting hit um and i guess the last one is quartzite crusher but to me this card's not much of a standout it was more of like let's just smack the face of the demon hunters to keep them in check and i feel like it's fallen off a little bit um, I, I don't think this should be a nerf candidate, but these are the cards that kind of stick out. And yes, Death Knight needs to be a hit because like it's up there and it negates
creates a lot of the board decks. Uh, Demon Hunter just got murdered. No need to talk about Demon Hunter nerfs. You could talk about buffing certain cards. Um, I guess you would look at Whizbang Workshop cards, but honestly, there's nothing too bad. I guess the one suggestion I would love to see is CCG. I keep pitching that to be in flavor with her old, like the old style of his stuff, she should have Outcast rather than Death Rattle. Because when Demon Hunter launched, it was all about outcast and damage and i feel like it'd be a, you know a lot better if it was outcast you didn't have to wait for it to die to get that immediate value but honestly maybe buff mctheridon because it's bad at eight mana but yeah probably just that ruin you're definitely not nerfing and you could looking you could look at like buffing a card like chia drake making the stats better i don't think you make it cheaper but a two four is like novice engineer or no sorry novice inventor back in the day you could do that um jade display have rush or something i I don't know how you save J Display. It's just not really a good card. And I really don't know what else you get. You can't you can't really buff Alonius. You can make the stats on this better. You can make it cost less, even more or less for spell damage. I just feel like Drew's just missing cards. Like buffs are not gonna save them at all. For Hunter, Hunter needs to get dialed back. I think again, like it's the top deck, especially across all ranks. I know it's not super popular or high legend, but the game's not balanced at high legend. Jungle Gym stands out. Three uses of this is pretty silly. I feel like I think when I, I reviewed the card, I said this will eventually end up with two durability. I'd probably say something like that, but to me, Hunter is one of the more fair decks out there. I know it's really good, but it plays for board. It does have a lot of reach, but I really wouldn't nerf it very hardly, if at all. But I do think, you know, you want to hit that lower MMR, you might want to consider it. I don't know what else you'd really hit in this deck, honestly. Like, just nothing really stands out. It's just a well-functioning deck, and I would probably do that. For Mage, I, I feel like if we're, if we're going to dial back, you know, try and slow things back, things down. We've nerfed around Sith long enough you know she's she's really good she's really busted i would just love to see to say spell damage like zero plus zero or make her seven mana make her a bit more expensive because i know she, again she never seems to be top tier but she's always present but she is a, at least a bit more of the healthier otk style where it takes longer so if they decide to leave sif mage I think I'm okay with it. Particularly, I'm gonna recommend a card getting nerfed later that will affect Sif Mage that's neutral. So I just feel like spell damage plus zero just makes more sense to me, especially it makes it more in line with elemental inspiration, which if you pl have played no spell schools, you get nothing from this, right? So it's kind of flavorful in that regard. Paladin, I don't think you nerf. It's, it's doing okay, not great. It already got kind of destroyed earlier on. If anything, I kind of wouldn't mind seeing our plushy our plush go back to three mana because it's so adorable but it still seems pretty good at four honestly so probably don't need to touch paladin if anything you could buff like a pipsy because that card's pretty rough but overall I, I feel like people will get upset if they, they buff paladin in any regard priest absolutely needs to get nerfed zarimi priest not only is it a terran standard it's a terran wild and by the way i'll mention I would love to see wild nerfs. I would love to see that happen. Will it happen ever? I don't know. I'll just say right now, wild nerfs, way gate, once per game. Uh, Zeribi banned from the format or nerfed in standard significantly, and then just do something about Naval Mine Rogue, right? Graveyard in particular, make it way more expensive because that's the problem card because you can play whatever death rattle, but those are like my big standouts. You can also talk about like Passage or other cards, but wild needs some help man and uh it just hasn't happened in a long time so yeah on that tangent crimson clergy is a pretty nuts card but i feel like it's necessary but funnel cake to me is a card that just always seems so broken that never gets talked about like one mana you probably draw some cards it counts towards your thirsty drifter it cheats mana it gains you like i guess refresh but basically gains you mana it's such a ridiculous card that I love to see it be two mana so you can't like copy it with your pip or make it so it can't target any minion, only your own stuff. This card just has always standed out to me, but obviously the main card you gotta look at is Zarimi. Zarimi's just broken. Like this card is utterly ridiculously broken. Just summoning five dragons, it's nothing. And it's five mana. Like everything about this card 
is ridiculous. I feel like you could double, almost double the requirement and the card is still good. And the part that bugs me is like Clay Matriarch is an insane card that sees like no play. If you ever face it as an arena, you know it's a nightmare of a card, but you don't play this because while well, the scale replica or whatever call, like it tutors arena. You don't want to mess with that. So you just play cheap dragons. It doesn't take very long. So if you make it take longer or make it more expensive, then you could play Clay Matriarch and actually have to work towards it. You could still set up an OTK. You you can still do ridiculous stuff with an extra turn. It just shouldn't be, I curve into Timewinder Zarini and kill my opponent or have all this extra mana to play a bunch of stuff and kill my opponent, or it just takes no time, right? I feel like not only the requirement needs to go up, I feel like the mana should at least go up by one. It's so utterly broken and it would help Wild as all the best stuff in Wild right now, the Aggro Priest, the Inner Fire Priest, they're all Zarimi based too. It absolutely 100% has to get nerfed like there's just no way a uh, rogue not thriving but all the decks that rogue are playing are like super gross scammy the giants and uh zeliacs but it all comes down to neutral stuff so i wouldn't propose a nerf to like anything in rogue right now if anything i would there's a card like there's cards you could buff like the crystal cove go the old school road make it like an actual throwback as a five five it's one of the worst cards in the set like they have some of the worst cards we did that video earlier you could go back to rhythm dance or Ryza, which has been buffed once before, is still completely useless. Maybe like a three mana two five, three mana three four. Uh, but the card that stands out to me, and I'm gonna rub my beard while I talk about it, he is one of the worst cards in the entire expansion. We talked about it before. His numbers are still atrocious, like sub 30% in every metric. Is Shoplifter Goldbeard. Um, make him a mana cheaper, like it couldn't hurt because he's so unbelievably bad and Pyro Rogue is bad. The only thing is it kind of encourages more like OTK shenanigans. So I don't love that aspect of it, but he's got a massive beard and the rogue cards from the set have been pretty underwhelming. They're relying all on neutral scams. For Shaman, I'm just gonna say it. Stop nerfing around the problem. Don't nerf night lightning reflexes. Don't nerf a light uh, pop-up book. Don't nerf all, all these burn cards and all that stuff. Nerf Flash of Lightning. It has had its time. This card is so ridiculously stupid. Two mana, draw a card. Remember Order in the Court? Got the card draw taken away from it? And its effect was not nearly as ridiculous as having the next turn. Every nature spell costs one less. Every one of them. This card needs to be reworked or destroyed. I'm sorry, there's no in between. It should be like four or five mana with this effect. Like, and even then it's still probably problematic. You could take the card draw away, but that probably doesn't matter. What I would love to see it is a rework of your nature spells cost one less, but not less than one, or next turn your next two or three nature spells cost one less. Put a cap on it because this card keeps coming up as a broken, just broken card that leads to super early OTKs. Bioluminescence wasn't good enough for the nerf. Uh, the gift hasn't been good enough for the nerf. You can look at Crash of Lightning, which is all, or Crash of Thunder, sorry, which is also absurd. Make this not go face. Like why do AOEs all have to go face? Like you make it six mana, does it matter? Seven mana, maybe it matters. Like. It's just such a fundamentally stupid deck that I can't stand has been in the game this long. It's not even high skill cap. It is just play this card, win the game, unless your opponent has like enough armor or like disrupts you. And it's, that's not a fun play style to be forced to run garbage, remove like text and that. So I do expect Flash of Lightning to get, it's gotta get completely reworked. Like it's just an absolute joke. And if they nerf around it again, I'm probably gonna lose my mind. Like I'm actually gonna lose my mind on it. And what card can he buff from Shaman? Because Shaman's unplayable, basically, outside of this. Highlander's not working. How about Agatha? Maybe draw two spells that cost five or more. They cost one less. Give it a little bit more flexibility. Some mana cheat. Like, just don't buff her stats. That's not going to work. Something like that. Um, and I, I feel like the big spells are pretty good. Like, uh, at least as an arena player, this card's insane. This card, by the way, like, low-key is absolutely cracked. The second the meta slows down, Wish Upon a Star might become one of the better cards in standard. I genuinely believe that it is so much stats. So do something maybe with Hagatha to get help make this, I guess if it costs one less, you get this for six, that'd be pretty nuts. But yeah, I, I feel like Hagatha, something like that, revert Dr. Holiday with two attack weapon. Okay, probably not, especially with something I'm gonna suggest later. So we have Warlock and there's two archetypes that are standing out. And yes, I know I'm like saying nerf everything. I'm at that point. I really am. 
nerf everything. The game is too fast. Everything needs to be dialed back. If you miss one thing, it's just gonna take over. And right now it's Pain Warlock and Wheel Warlock. Forge of Wills has been broken since day one. This could easily go to four mana. You could cap its stats where you can't make something bigger than a six six. Make it a kind of thematic six sixes and all of that. I feel like this card is been well overdue to get nerfed. I wouldn't affect Pain Warlock that much. They'd use the location, but it's not super pivotal. I would make this card more expensive, Imprisoned Horror, 10, 11 mana, something like that. Make it so it takes a little bit longer to cheat out because this is the best card in Pain Warlock by far. Uh, the, it comes down really, it feels like way too fast. It feels like way too fast and uh, I would dial that back and I would just, make this like actually be five turns. It's not five turns, it's four. So either change it so it ends on your opponent's turn or just say destroy your deck in six turns and have it function the same way, right? Like, right? like it needs to change the way it's worded at least. I'm not saying necessarily nerf it, especially considering a change I'm gonna propose, but I just like reword it so it's actually accurate. And I feel like that covers yourself for uh, Warlock. For Warrior, uh, Odin Warrior is still pretty good, but it's a lot more about Reno Warrior. And again, the thing I'm gonna suggest is gonna make Reno Warrior way better. I feel like Brand could be seven. I really do. Like, it's such a toxic gameplay thing once it gets going, especially in conjunction with Boom Boss. You can have Boom Boss shuffle left less TNTs, but that's really, he's only shuffling too many because of Bran. So I don't know, you could nerf Bran, you could, uh, you could nerf Boom Boss. Those are cards to look out for. You could put Trial by Fire back to seven mana. But I do think, again, you gotta make clears less efficient. They've already nerfed Sanitize once. Would they do that again? I don't know. But again, something that I feel like Warrior needs to hit. So I basically proposed a nerf to like every class and I'm not done. Neutrals, the Zilliax, I think it needs to get nerfed again with the virus module. I think the virus module needs to be stealth for for only one turn or just take it off something like, make it so you can't just perma stealth a doubling thing. That's just so unfun, so uninteractive. It's not super duper top tier, but you saw the stats, it's a competitive deck and I think it would you know help future proof the card but virus module, and you can look at ticking module again, it's still coming up for really cheap. But Zeliox to me is a standout. The other standout is a card that's in nearly 50% of decks in Miracle Salesman. It enables OTK strategies. It's really good in aggro decks. It's really good in any deck because you get a free trade, right? You just trade and draw a card. It's a one mana two, two, incredible upside. I feel like something's got to give. And the suggestions I've heard, the one I made, make it a one mana two, one. So the stats are nearly as good and i've also heard the suggestion of making the steak oil cost one so it's not such an easy otk burn thing and it's kind of in line with snake oil you're paying you're paying one for it even though it seems pretty useless and it would also just buff snake oil seller right because you would shuffle two one cost things into the deck so it's not quite as free for me i nerfed the stats i don't think you make it two man or anything like that but one mana two one one mana one two i don't know but there's a lot of things but this card's in like 50 percent of decks it has to get hit and i'm gonna go off the board here as well with Celestial Projectionist. This is kind of one of the big scam enablers, whether it's a new like draw giant, the molten giant, the uh, the nine mana five five we talked about with Warlock. This card just allows you to get free zero mana giants. And it keeps popping up in all of these scam decks where I make it a little bit more expensive, where it's like three mana, kind of more in line with Zola. You know, it just feels like this card, premium stats and its effect allows these scam decks to pop off way too soon. So for me, I'd actually nerf Celestial Projectionist, make it three mana. And the last thing I will suggest, which I have mentioned for the last, I don't know how many predictions or suggestions, I don't think it'll ever happen, but I don't care. Reno keeps popping up more so in duplicate scam decks, in the Wheel Warlocks, in the Odin Warriors of the world, than he does in decks that he's supposed to be in, in actual Highlander decks. And when you actually play a deck full of singletons, you automatically lose to like a third of the meta because plagues disrupt you. I would love for this card to say, if your deck started with no duplicates, do the same thing. Whether that means making them nine or 10 mana, because it might be a little too powerful if there's like pretty much no counterplay to it, that's fine. There's no counterplay to plagues either. There's no counterplay to uh, excavates. There's no counterplay to a lot of things in the game. The counterplay to this card is you're supposed to have a weaker deck because you only run one ofs. When you're punished for that, on top of it being punished for that, 
with like plagues and all of that, I think it's lame. And Reno decks have not thrived since Showdown in the Badlands. It's all been these duplicate decks that abuse it. So you get rid of that annoying interaction where decks abuse this and then you let Reno decks actually thrive. If it's too good, if it turns out to be a mistake, you can change it afterwards, put it back. But I think it's worth taking that risk, seeing what's it all about. And that's my last prediction and recommendation is that Reno will be based on starting deck. And I'll say that in the next prediction video in the one after that, in the one after that. Anyways, let me know in the comments down below what you agree with, disagree with, what you'd like to see get nerfed, buff. Do you want me, to, do you want them to go all zeddy on it and delete everything? I feel like it's time to slow Hearthstone down. And I really hope we see at least a good amount of these changes. Anyways, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends.